All right, guys, welcome back to another tutorial. And in this video, finally going to start talking to you about classes and objects and some cool things that you can do with them. So first of all, what the heck is a class? Well, the most simple definition is basically a class is an easy way where you can group similar variables and functions together. So say you're making a computer game. Usually all of the functions dealing with enemies and all the variables too you would want in an enemy class maybe you have a different one for moving your character around well all of those functions for moving your main character would be in a character class so on and so forth so again the most simple definition is it's a really cool way where you can group similar variables and functions together am I being recorded? okay just checking so with that being said let's go ahead and look at an example right now so in order to make a class, type the keyword class and then add a space. Now class pretty much says, hey, Python, I'm about to make a class. Now after this, what you want to do is you want to name your class something. And it's common practice to name it with a capital letter. And this is just so programmers can differentiate between a class and like a normal variable or a function or anything like that. So this is how we make a class called enemy. Now add a colon. Now whatever is indented after this is going to be part of your enemy class. So every variable inside here and every function is going to belong to this enemy class. So let's go ahead and make a simple variable first. So we'll say that each enemy has a life of three. So now this life variable is actually part of this enemy class. Just remember that. So now what we can do is we can make a couple of functions for this class so what's one thing that we can do we'll say we'll make a function called attack and this is just um, what happens whenever we attack an enemy now check this out whenever I'm just writing these parentheses right here what PyCharm did is it automatically filled in this keyword of self now this is going to be a little confusing until I finish this program and explain what objects are um, but pretty much think of whenever you see self, it means use something from this own class. So if you say, you're going to see later like self attack, it means use the attack function in this class. Self life means use the life variable in this class. Again, kind of confusing at first, but you guys are going to see later on what it does. All right. So let's make this function actually do something. Whenever we attack the enemy, we'll just do something like print attack or actually let's print ouch we'll say that the enemy says ouch and also what we want to do is we wanna subtract one from the enemy's life now we can't just do this check it out if we just try to subtract one from life we get a little error what we actually need to do is what I was talking about put self life so that's how you access the variables inside your class so pretty much self is saying, okay, inside this class, take away one from the life variable. Simple enough. Maybe it was easy. I don't understand. Who knew? All right. So let's make one more function. So this class isn't that boring. Um, we'll make another function to check the enemy's life. And of course, it automatically fills in that self variable. And we'll say, I don't know, maybe a little if statement. So if self, not slough. So if self life is less than or equal to zero, and this is actually another thing I want to point out. Whenever you're making computer games, don't just check if the enemy's life is equal to zero to see if they're dead. Because like if they had three life and you had like a super powerful weapon to like slash them and it took away five life, well then their life would be negative two. So always make sure to check if it's less than or equal to zero. Just a little, I don't know, tip for game development. So if they're less than or equal to zero, we'll just print something like I am dead. Ob the enemy obviously couldn't say anything if it was dead, but this is our game. We can do what you want. All right. So if they're dead, they're dead. Else, we'll just uh, print out like how much life they have left. So print something like, of course, we need to convert it to a string. So print out the amount of life that they have left and we'll just do something like this life left 
like two life left, one life left, tomato, tomato. All right, so right now we have a very simple class of enemy. So the enemy has three life and we can attack him. Whenever we call this function, it takes one life away. And also anytime we can have it check to see how much life the enemy has. If it's dead, it prints out I'm dead. Or if it's not dead, it tells you how much life he has left. Simple enough. Now, if we just try to do something like this, attack. Okay, well, that's not working. Now, the reason that this doesn't work is because in order to use anything inside your class, you need to access it a special way, and that is by creating something called an object. Now, an object, just think of it like this. It's pretty much a way that you can access the stuff inside your class. And I know I just said that twice, but it's actually really important to understand. And they're really easy to make as well. So the first thing you do is you pretty much act like you're making a normal variable. So I'm going to make an object called enemy1. So what you set it equal to is the class that you want to use stuff from. So I want to use the stuff inside the enemy class. So anytime I want to use that, I need this object called enemy1 and its object from this class right here. So now we can just do something called enemy1 attack. And what this pretty much means is this. It says, okay, enemy1 is an object from what class? Well, enemy. So go to the class enemy and once you're in there, use attack. So now if we try to run this, it would say ouch because it just took one away from the enemy. And actually, if we check life to make sure that worked, whenever we run this, it said okay, it starts with three, of course. So we're gonna attack this enemy once say ouch and then it says two life left now I want to show you guys one other really cool thing and this is probably the main reason that people use classes all the time see each object is actually a copy of its class so each object is actually independent of one another so check this out don't understand what I mean you will in just a second Say that we have enemy 1, and say we have another enemy called enemy 2. Actually, let me code this entire thing, and then I'll um, talk you guys through it. And let me do this. All right. So what's going to happen is we're going to make two objects, or two copies, from this class. One of them is going to be stored in the object enemy 1, and another one is going to be stored in the object enemy2. Now each of these are pretty much think of, them, think of them like their own enemies. So each of those has three life each. So whenever you attack enemy1, it doesn't affect enemy2. So let me run this and I'll show you guys what I'm talking about. So we created two objects. We attacked enemy1 twice and then checked its life and it had one life left. However, enemy2 it still had three life left. So this is how people make computer games with one class, which is pretty much a template of how do you want to code the enemy, how do you want it to act and behave, and you can create as many of them as you want just by making an object for each one. So how awesome is that? So that is the basics of a class, pretty much not only a group of similar functions and objects, but pretty much a template of how you want an object to behave and act. And of course you can make as many copies of it as you want and each of the objects are independent of one another. So if you guys don't completely understand this or it seems kind of like unfamiliar, whenever we start making other programs it's going to become second nature and also really easy to understand. But that is the basics of classes and objects in Python. And also, if you have any questions, then ask me on my forum. But for now, thank you guys for watching. Don't forget to subscribe, and I'll see you next tutorial.